Welcome back. In this video, we will have a look at how can we log in this users that we managed to register in the previous video. So in the previous video, we created two users, chuck.norris at gmail.com and chuck at gmail.com. Both users created successfully and for both users, we can also see there's entries in our to-do entry table. Both of them will have empty to-do lists. Right, so back at Visual Studio or in Visual Studio, we've got our user service dot dot class or file there, user service dot dot. And we have completed the check if user exists and the create user. So what we're going to do in this video is to create this function called login user. So for this function login user, we accept a username and a password to log in the specific person. Okay, so we will start off with the result being OK and then return the result at the end. So currently it will just return back OK. So like we did with the create user, as soon as we get into this function, we want to start showing the progress and setting some user progress text. So I'm going to copy that and let's go into this login user and we're also going to set the user progress to true and the user progress text to not creating a new user so we will change this a bit to say something like busy logging you in or signing you in please wait after this we will still need to notify all the listeners to know that we should start showing that progress bar or the progress indicator right so the next step will now actually be to try and log in this user so for this we're going to use a back endless user class and for this back endless user class, it can be nullable. So just add your question mark there. Let's call this user because we're going to get back some data and we want to check if that data that comes back is in fact a back endless user or if it is something that's null, which means we could not log in that user. So we're going to say back endless user, name it whatever you want, and then we need to await. And you'll see because we have the await keyword, we'll need to have asynchronous with this function login user. So we're going to say back in this dot user service. And if you put the dot there, you will see there's a few things that we can do. We can get the current user. We can check if it is a valid login and we can log in. So this is what we want to do. We want to log in this person. Now let's hover over this login function. You can see if you hover over it, we need to have login and password. And then there's a Boolean that says stay logged in true or false. And you can see that that stay logged in is set to false right from the start, which means you do not have to indicate stay logged in at all. But if you want to have the user stay logged in, then you will set that value to true. And in our case, we will actually do that so that the next time that the user wants to use the app, it doesn't need to log in again. Right. So for the first part, which is the login there, that will actually be the username of the person that you want to log in. So we pass through the username here. So I'm just going to use the username there. And the second one is the password. But because we want to also make sure that the user do not need to sign in every single time, we will also add that stay logged in. We set that stay logged in to true. Right, so this one line will actually now log in the user. But if we want to do some error handling, we will just put the dot there and have some error handling there as well. Again, I'm just going to use the opening and the closing braces there for the error. If there is an error that occurred, I'm going to set that result to this error. So I'm going to call that get human readable error again, and I will send through this error message. And so in this case, we're going to say error dot to string. Right, so that will take care of any errors that happens when we're trying to log in this user and we're setting the result. So if we try to log in the user and something went wrong, the result will have that error message and that is what we will be returning. If not, the result will still be okay. Right, so this is how you log in a user. You go to the user service, you call the login function, you pass in the username and the password, and by the way, your username here could be the email, so that's the one that you set as your identity. So it could be a username, it could be an email, it could be whatever. In our case, we call it username, but it's in fact an email address. Right, then we have the error, and we will catch that error inside of this result. Right, so after this line then, we can go and check that user object. So I'm going to say, if the user is not equal to null, then we know that we actually have a user here. 
So then I'm going to go to my current user. So remember, we've got a variable there at the top that's called current user, and we're going to set that current user to the user that is now logged in. So at this stage, we will not be listening to this current user. So I'm not going to say notify listeners like I did there. But I will be able to still get the value of current user by calling the getter method there or the getter function. Right, and then directly after that if statement, we will then go and set the show user progress to false so that the progress bar or the progress indicator will stop on the screen. Then we will say notify listeners again just to make sure that we know that this one has changed and we can remove that app progress indicator. At the end, we will just return back the result. So let me just remove these empty lines. So we start off with the result as being okay. We start showing the progress. We start showing the text or we're changing the text. So remember, we could still be at this text, for example, creating a new user. So we'll need to change the text to whatever we're busy with. We notify the listeners. So it starts showing the progress indicator. We log in the user, so we're telling back in as we want to keep this user logged in. And if there's an error, we will save the error into the result. Then we check if the user is not equal to null. We know that that user exists and the user is logged in. So we set the current user to this user object. We set the progress indicator to false. We remove the progress indicator. We notify the listeners and we return back the result. Okay, so that is how you log in a user using backendless. Now, in order to log in a user also, we will need to go to this helper class of ours. And you will remember inside of the helper class, we've got this login user in UI. So this is the function we will call in the UI. In the login page, we will call login user in UI. But inside of this function, we will call this user service function called login user. Okay, so let's go to the helper. And then we go into these brackets there. And this is how we will log in a user in the user interface. We will pass in the context, we will pass in an email address, and we will pass in a password. All right, so now the same thing that we did here, you can remember in the create new user, we used this line to just make sure that the keyboard actually closes down. So that will be my first line in here as well, as soon as the user clicks on the button and we call this function. Now we're gonna test again, if this email that was passed in is empty, or the password that was passed in is empty. We will show the snack bar and the message will be, please enter all fields. Or in this case, we can maybe just say enter both fields. Okay, after the if statement then, we can have an else. So the else means everything was typed correctly. We've got an email, we've got a password and we can now try and log in this user. So remember that our login function this side, login user, returns back a result. So we will need to look at that result. So we will start off with a string result equals. We're going to use the await keyword, and that's why this function also needs to be an asynchronous function. And we're going to call context. Now in this case, it's again using the provider to get that specific function for me. So we're going to read from which class. Well, in this case, it is the user service class. And we want to call one specific function there. And that one is login the user. It needs a username, so we're gonna pass in the email there, but make sure that it's trimmed so that there's no white space. We also need the password, and also for the password, let's just trim it before we send it through. Right, and that's it. Now we've logged in the user, so now there's a result. So let's look at that result. If that result is not equal to okay, then we know something went wrong. So let me just uh, get that one correct there. Okay, so if the result is not equal to okay, we can show the snack bar and again, show some message. And I think the message we can just keep as result. The else part means everything went fine and the user is now logged in. So in this case now, we will just go to navigator.of context pop and push named and we're going to go to our root manager and we're going to open up the to do page. Right, so let's just go through the logic here. We pass in an email and a password. We take the focus away from uh, the keyboard. So it closes the keyboard. If the email is empty or the password is empty, we show a message, please enter both fields. If they are correct, we can start 
calling this function. So we go to the user service, we call login user, we pass in the email and the password after trimming them, and now we've got back the result. If the result is not equal to OK, it means there's some error, so we show that error. That error will be contained inside of result. Else, if there's no error, we will take the user to the to-do page. So somewhere here, we will also need to get the to-dos of the year, of the, the user. So I'm just going to add a comment here. So we will come back to this as soon as we do the to-do service. So we will need to get the to-dos of that user and start showing the to-dos. Okay, so I'm going to save this now, and this login user in user interface should now be fine and should now work. Right, so let's go to the login page now and see if we can implement this. All right, let me just go to the top. You can see that we've got a username controller, we've got a password controller. We initialize it here and we dispose of it here. Now, if we go down, you'll see welcome, please enter your email address, please enter your password, and you can see there's the login button. So in the login button, when it gets pressed, we can now do something inside of here. And the only thing we'll need to do is to call that login user in user interface, the one we just completed. We're passing in the context, the email will come from this email controller, what did we call it, username controller. Username a controller dot text, and for the password, it will be the password controller dot text. And that's all we need to do. So we call this function, that function will run, it will call the login user and the user service. If we go to the user service, it will call this function and it will try and login the user. Okay, so let's go back to login. So that's all we need to do. When we click the login button, we call login user in user interface, pass in the email and the password, and the rest of the functions will do the rest for us. Okay, if we go down, you can also see there's registering a new user, which will push it to the register page, which we already did. And now there's also reset password. So we will do this in a next video. Now, the only thing that we still need to do here is to show some form of a progress indicator. So now at the end of the stack, so that's at the end of that center, we will create a new selector. All right, I'm going to delete all of these and I'll type it in myself later on. Okay, so we're going to have a selector. The type of the selector, we'll go and have a look at the user service class. And what we want to pass in or what we want to have a look at is exactly the same as we did previously in uh, the register page. And that is we want to use a class called tuple2. So I'm going to explain a bit more inside of this example on how this tuple works again. Okay, so we're going to use tuple2 basically just means we can have two values that we're going to look at and which are the two values that we want to have a look at. So if you go back to user service, you see that we have called or changed show user progress and the user progress text. So it's those two that we want to look at, okay, or we want to listen for. Now inside of these brackets, we will need a selector. And for the selector, we will have a context and we'll have a value. Now we will return back a tuple2. And for this tuple2, we'll need to have two items. So let's just hover over this value now. And you can see it's the user service class or that user service object. So inside of this value, we've got those values that we want to listen for. So we want to listen for the show user progress. And for item two, we want to go to value dot. We want to also look at user progress text. So those are the two values that we want to listen for. Let me just complete the builder and then we'll go through this one quickly again. So for the builder, we're going to use context. We will again have a value and we will have a child. Right, so for the builder then, inside of the builder, we will need to return something. So let's just have a look at this now. If I hover over value, you can see that's the tuple2 object that we have here. So the selector will have a value that is an object of the user service. Tuple2 now basically just tells me I will have two different items as this object. The first item will be value dot show user progress. Remember, value is the class or the object user service. So going to user service dot show user progress is what I want to listen for. And the second value will be the user progress text. So what I can also do, I can make this one tuple three and I can make that one tuple three. And then I can add a third value to listen for. 
So for example, I can go to value dot, let's say we want to listen for the current user. Okay, so you can use that tuple. Let me just go to the pubspec.yaml. You can see that I've included this package there, tuple. Okay, so you can use that package to help your provider provide more than just one value when you're using selector. Okay, so in this case, we will just be providing two values. So like the previous video where we did the registration page, uh, it's exactly the same thing. So we're going to use tuple two. This one is the user service. So we want to listen for the show user progress and user progress text. In the builder then, that value is in fact this tuple two object. And this object has an item one and an item two. Okay, so what we want to do is to go to value, which is the tuple, and you can see there's item one and item two. So item one will be this show user progress. Item two will be user progress text. So firstly, we want to test that item one. So that is that show user progress, whether it's true or false. If it is true, we want to start showing our up app progress indicator. The text I want to show is in fact this user progress text. So if item one is the show user progress, then item two, item two, sorry, value dot item two, item two will then be this user progress text. And then I can just end it off with a semicolon. Okay, and then the else part will be the container, which is just empty. And then we can close it off with a semicolon. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're saying with the selector of provider, we're looking at two different values, listening for the show user progress and listening for the user progress text. Using tuple two, I can listen to two different values, not just one like we used to with selector. If we go into the builder, this value will then be this tuple object, which has an item one and an item two. Item one is show user progress, item two is user progress text. So if value item one which is the show user progress. So if the show user progress is true, then we're going to show the app bar or the app progress indicator. And we will show the text as value.item2, which is the user progress text. Otherwise, if that show user progress is false, if it changes to false when we're done logging in the user, it will just show an empty container. Right, so when we run this application now, you can see that I can enter my email address here. Going back to backendless, if I have a look at my users table again, I can see that I've got two users here, chuck.norris and chuck at gmail.com. So let's just choose one of these two. I'm going to go with chuck at gmail.com. So that's the email address, chuck at gmail.com. And maybe if I make a mistake there, let's see what happens. I'm going to log in. Busy logging you in. Please wait. Please check your username or password. The combination do not match anything in the database. Okay, so I'm going to say com there and log in again. And you can see it directly takes me into the app. I'm not sure. I hope that password was one, two. I can't remember. Okay, so at this stage, I cannot log out the user. I cannot do anything here. Nothing else is working. But I logged in this user. Okay, so let's run this app again. If I rerun this app now, it takes me back to the login screen. So even though when we went to, or when we did the user service, and we included the true value there to say, keep the user logged in, you can still see that the user is not logged in. So let's just try this again. So it's gonna be chuck at gmail.com. That's working. Uh, I'm gonna add just the one as the password there and say login. And you can see, please check your username and password. Okay, so at this stage, one, two is the correct password, and that will take me, or was it one, two, three? I'm not sure. Let's take one, two, three. Yes, and then we are inside of the app. Okay, but when we run the app again, you can see that it doesn't work. It does not keep me logged in. Okay, so there's a slight change that we need to make. So what we need to do is to go into the user service, and we need to do this function called check if the user is logged in. Okay, so this we will do in the next video. So for this video, then we have completed login user and we can now successfully log in a user and take him to the to do page. So in the next video, we will be creating this function called check if the user is logged in. See you in the next video.